Hey there everyone, this is Mo Shang and today we're having a look at the Golf firmware for the Groovesizer multiboard. Now the Golf uh, is a mute MIDI drum sequencer, it's got 12 tracks and uh, you, uh, on switching on, you'll be on this page. This is the, the edit page and you can edit, uh, access the other two pages or uh, modes with shift L. So you can go from the edit page here to the master page, uh, the trigger page and back to the edit page. Now to select your 12 tracks, uh, you use the function keys over here, F1, F2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for the first six tracks. And then to access tracks seven to 12, you would use Shift R for if uh, for track 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we're on track 1, currently set up as a kick. Uh, and the, and the, I guess one of the cool things about uh, the Golf firmware is that uh, you have quite a bit of control over each of the 12 individual tracks. For example, you can set the MIDI channel for each of the tracks. So they can all be on a separate track uh, for, to use with this uh, the Zoom uh, drum module. They have to send on track uh, 10, all of them. But if you add another uh, module that's on a, on a different channel, you can absolutely set up some tracks to send to that one and uh, some tracks to send to another. So on this part, that would be your uh, MIDI channel. The uh, actual MIDI note number that is being sent uh, is set over here. So you can change your instruments. Let's find the kick again. There we go. Um, then next to that, ah, oh, I think we should get that, uh, get to that in just a sec. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, enter a couple of steps. There we go. So let's switch to another, uh, track. This one's got a snare. A very basic little pattern there. Uh, but just to show off, uh, some other features, uh, for each of the tracks also you have, uh, accent and normal level. So right now the, the steps are all playing at the normal level. You can set the normal level with uh, this part over here. It's MIDI velocity 127 all the way right down to nothing uh, and somewhere in between. There we go. And then uh, to add an accent you hold shift L and press the steps and if they're I'm holding a sh no, shift L now and uh, that shows you the steps that are accented and as you can hear the accented steps are playing louder um, but uh, obviously you can set the level for that as well so if you want to set it softer than the normal level that's up to you or loudest or somewhere in between and again this is uh, separate uh, for each of the of the different of the uh, 12 tracks okay let's add another instrument okay okay uh, play with accents on that too and again you can uh, you know send, set it separately to something that works well. Uh, I would like to show off another feature and that is flams. Actually, flams go all the way into uh, delay uh, territory because you can set them to be quite long. Let's add a flam. So just to be clear, let's make all of those steps uh, flammed and to do so you hold Shift R to add a flam and then press the step. You can hear the flam now. And uh, again, for each of the tracks, uh, you have control over the the, the delay, the, the kind of delay, of uh, how long it takes before uh, the, the tap is repeated. And also the decay uh, of the flam. So like this, that would be, uh, the, the, the decays would fall off very quickly. All the way on the other side, you can hear and they will just carry on going. Um, and what this display shows you is the actual uh, 
a meter velocity level by v which each of the uh, consecutive steps are, are lowered. Okay, but another fun thing you can do is uh, I showed you that you can uh, set the, the uh, delay time or the flam time with this part. But if you hold shift uh, L in, those become a tempo delay. So you can do like this. Another uh, sync to the tempo. And again, there, uh, I should reiterate that that is separate for each of the tracks. So I can go back to my snare here and set up a, a different kind of a delay on, on that one or a different kind of flam. And the one I set for. Uh, the tambourine sound will, will remain the way it was. Okay, let's move on to our master page. So that's another hit of Shift L. And on the master page, you can see all the step, steps that are lit over all of your tracks. Uh, and that's handy because with F3 lit, you can add mutes to mute uh, all, all instruments on those steps. And another thing you can do, which is a, a little odd, but uh, it was a requested feature, is to do skips. So with a four lit, uh, the step will be just skipped over. <laughs> it makes for very weird little little patterns. By the way, uh, uh, throughout, if you want to clear everything that's selected, you hold Shift L and F1, and that will clear clear everything. And now if you do that, you're going to get probably out of sync with uh, the rest of the, your instruments. So to get it back to the actual, uh, the real first step, you would have did uh, Shift R once. Okay, uh, on F2 we have Tap Tempo. Now the only thing is that uh, if you change tempo, then uh, those uh, delayed flams that we did before, they're, they're not going to be in uh, tempo anymore. You can go back and change them again for the new tempo. Let me just load something that's sounding uh, 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 less annoying. Okay. So we're back on the, master pa on the master page with a different pattern. Uh, let me show you what the parts do. Tempo on the far right. BPM uh, will be displayed. You can also fine-tune uh, the BPM with F5 and 6. Slower with F5 and faster with F6. Let's go back to the trigger page and just load that pattern again. Okay, next to that we have our swing setting. From no swing to full swing. Next to that we have the pattern length. So if you see on this display, it shows all the all the steps, and we're currently running from step one to thirty-two. And now you can see we're uh, making the pattern shorter from the back, but you can also make it shorter from the front with this pot next to it. So that's our end point, and now I'm adjusting the the start point as well. And another fun thing is that you can move, slide that, that window around, your, your playback window. So imagine I have these steps selected, which I do. Then you can slide that window around. Something uh, that, that I like to do in, uh, in Ableton Live. So it's fun to do here as well. Okay, and uh, back to the normal pattern. Let's make it back to its normal step. And um, the final part in the on the master page is uh, oh your program changes, so you can uh, send program changes and uh, select your your instrument kits. Okay, moving on to the trigger page where you save and load patterns now. To save a pattern in memory, you uh, 
choose one of your empty spots. Um, you have 32 uh, save locations on each page. Uh, and to access the different pages, you hold Shift L, F1, F2, another 32, F3, another 32. And on the fourth uh, trigger page, you have access to the first uh, 16. These do nothing for a total of 112 save locations. So I'm going to take the pattern in memory and I'm just going to store it on, on that button there. And to do so, I hold a long press. And now it is stored there. If you want to overwrite uh, a pattern already in memory, it will, uh, let me load something else. Okay. Again, you long press, but now you're gonna have to confirm because uh, there is already something there. And you, to confirm, you press the step again. So I, I will overwrite it. Okay, and uh, you can also do pattern chaining. So let me show you over here. F6 shows that at the end of this pattern, it will jump to the next one. Same with this one. Uh, F5 shows that it will jump back to the head, and the head is the, the first pattern that was triggered. So if I start it over here, it will just jump between those two. This will be the head. Go to the next pattern, jump back to the head. So it's going to go back to, to this one over here. Okay, and that's basically it for the Golf firmware. Um, no real-time recording at this point, but there's still quite a bit of firmware, well, space left, uh, programming space, so I may be adding that at a later point. Uh, a final thing I wanted to show you, uh, well, actually, it's a bit of a complaint because <laughs> I wrote this, uh, this firmware to work with my uh, MPX-8 from Akai, and uh, unfortunately, the uh, MIDI input on the on the MPX8 is a little borked, and to and to show that to you, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to clear this pattern and uh, just oops, okay, add some sixteenths. Oops, let's find an instrument. There we go. Let's use this one. be kind I'm gonna go switch off the swing so it's straight and make it clear to you so the zoom uh, functions as you would expect it <laughs> does what you tell it to and it triggers on each of the steps triggers each of the 16s now if you give me a second and through the magic of YouTube you'll see the MPX try and attempt the same feat with the exact same pattern Okay, so here we have the MPX-8 uh, set up, playing uh, via media that same pattern. And as you hear, every now and again, it will just skip for no apparent reason one of the steps. So have a listen. Oh, there's one. And another. And another and so on and uh, <laughs> unfortunately the more uh, it seems that the more tracks you add the, the worse it gets so I'm not sure what's up with that hopefully there will be a, a fix for that at some point but anyway that was a look at the golf firmware for the Groovisizer MB oh, available now at groovisizer.com thanks for watching